So now I'm going to pass it over to Kirsten so she can tell us a little bit more about our folk art watercolor gels. Hey everyone, so thanks Jess. So folk art watercolor gels, it's just a fabulous paint that you can do so much with. So that's really what we want to focus on today. The possibilities, it's got a watercolor effect, it's great for raw wood, it's great for photos. Really, there is so much that you can do. So first, I want to show you the color palette. There is 20 colors in the line, and the assortment of colors is just stunning. So I'm going to show you just some of my favorite. Um, and know that the watercolor gels, so they work like a watercolor. They're thinner, they can blend. Um, you can add water to get a much softer, transparent look. This is a great way to show you, this is really just two colors. So you're using your pink and your yellow, and then what you're doing is you're mixing. So by adding water, by blending colors, you get all of that vibrancy, you get that transparent watercolor look, all with just a few colors and the color palette is gorgeous. So let me show you guys, there's 20 colors, they all work beautifully together, but there's really a wide range. There is a great palette of pinks, cotton candy, punchy purple is my favorite, and then you also get a more vivid pink, the pink berry. So that's a great grouping. I wanna show you guys just some more of the color palettes that we love to combine, whether you're doing ombre, whether you're doing watercolor, you've got the Meyer lemon, you've got the peach pop, and you've got the clementine. Just the way they work together is just beautiful. You've got some really bright greens, you've got some pastel greens, you've got that limelight, beach glass, and then look at that, how they work together. Mermaid teal, beach glass together makes a beautiful ombre. You've also got your basics. You've got your black, you've got your white, You've got a really rich periwinkle and a really bright blue. So the color range is everything that you would need to create all of the beautiful effects that I'm going to show you guys today. All right. I love the colors of this line, Kirsten. Aren't I love they beautiful? How, like, bold and vibrant they all are. I picked my shirt based on my favorite color, <laughs> which is punchy purple. I love it. I really didn't, but it works, right? Absolutely. Okay. So the basics of the folk art watercolor gels is. Um, the basics is the techniques is doing watercolor, um, but the great thing about this as opposed to traditional watercolor is the gel. The gel allows you to have more control. It allows you to pick areas that you're going to color and do traditional painting without getting that bleed that you get with a watercolor. So that is a great, a great thing about the gels. You also are able, let me show you guys this planter. So this is just basic raw wood beautiful surface everything is raw wood everything is natural wood right now and getting that soft tint with still being able to see the wood grain having the very the varied colors based on adding more water or adding less water there's so much that you can do with the folk art watercolor gels all right so the first thing we're going to do just to kind of show you guys a really basic technique is tinting photos people have been coloring photography for as long as I can, as long as I've been crafting. I think it maybe started with baby photos, then it went into to wedding photos. There's a big trend with um, travel photography. Let me show you just some of the assortment. So we've got, we've got wedding, we've got a, a trip to New York, we've got this beautiful um, beach and, and street scape. So what you can do with a photo is really fun with the gels. And what is, this again, is one of the best benefits. If you were to tint a photo with basic watercolors, it would maybe warp the photo, it would maybe be too, too, um, too watery, so you couldn't have the control in these little design areas like the leaves or the flowers. But because it's gels, you have all of the control of a traditional acrylic paint, but you get the effect of watercolor. All right, so all I'm going to do is pick some of my favorite colors. This mermaid teal. Kirsten, we have a couple great comments. Um, Brenda said, looking forward to trying these. Love the possibility of watercolor with no bleed. It's exactly what you'll get. Mm -hmm. I love to do watercolor because I love to get the bleed for traditional, like a really abstract floral or something that you want that effect. But when you don't want it, you can't control mm -hmm. um, a traditional watercolor. Yeah. So it really is... So with gels, you can kind of get both looks. Exactly. I love that. 
All right, so I'm just going to pick four really soft pastel colors that go good together. Now, I didn't mention this, but I'm going to because Mod Podge will be another showcase. Um, this paint works fabulous with Mod Podge. View Mod Podge as the application for your pattern. It's a great way to apply your photo, whether it be to a canvas or to a wood frame. It is a great way to create, we're gonna do this project in a minute. It's a great way to create a beautiful collage. Again, whether it's in an art journal, whether it's on a canvas for wall decor, but use Mod Podge. My favorite with the gels is the Mod Podge matte. So use Mod Podge the traditional way adding elements, adding backgrounds, just let everything dry and then it's the perfect surface to then go in and color with your folk art gels. Okay, so what I did with this is I printed a photo, I applied it again with the Mod Podge. A little tip for everyone that has used Mod Podge um, in the past. When you're going to use the folk art gels after, apply Mod Podge to the back of your photo or to the back of your collage elements apply them to your surface, but don't apply your top coat. Apply your top coat after you've applied your folk art gels. What that does is it just lets the gels attach to the paper. You get more of a vibrant color, you haven't sealed your photo. So that's just a tip for anyone that's used Mod Podge and the traditional way is to do a base coat and then do a top coat to seal it. You could seal it after you added your watercolor gels though, right? Yes, absolutely. Now the watercolor gels are water-based, of course, but they're also indoor-outdoor. So the, what you can do with planners, what you can do with just really fun projects, there's lots of flexibility. But the key to the, to the photos or to the collage is seal it after. Just because just cause that, Jess, you get the mm -hmm. chance to um, build colors better, not to have protection on your photo, and it's just more vibrant. All right, so it's simply this easy. That's what I love about it is there's no water, there's no taping, there's no creating a resist pattern. But because of the transparency of the gel, look how the colors are vibrant, but all of the detail in your photo is still there. You're not having to outline the elements in your photo. You can just wash right over it and get that vibrant color and the black in the image still pops right through. Love that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, Kayla said this would be cool for pop art. Oh, it would be perfect for pop art. Mm -hmm. That's so fun. But that's what I love the most. So just like I've probably said too many times, <laughs> watercolor, traditional watercolor paint would not do that. You'd have bleed up in your sky running down the areas that you didn't want color and basic matte acrylic, even if you added water, you wouldn't get that vibrant color and the ability of your photo images to come right through. I'm gonna go right into that peach and just pick another color. I want you guys mostly to see how your images come right through. It looks like it's really easy to apply too, Kirsten. It goes on just like any traditional acrylic paint. The open time is perfect. You can blend. Actually, I'll add a little yellow just to show you how great two colors blend to get that ombre look. And if you wanted to, here's another little tip. You don't wanna have it completely watered down when you're working on a photo, but if you just wet your brush and go right over that color that came straight out of the bottle, you don't lose the intensity of the pigment, but you just get a little bit softer shade. Teresa said, um, would work well to color pen design drawings, which I think you might be planning to demo in a little bit. That is what we're going to demo, and she's absolutely right. It's great for tinting anyone that does wood burning. Mm. It's fabulous for that because um, paint would fill in the work that you did with the wood burner, and this just washes right over it and keeps that really vivid wood burned pattern. I love that idea. Pen and ink pop art, traditional painting, abstract watercolor. There's so much that you can do. But look how vibrant the colors are. You can't see where I blended the colors together 
and you get all of the images that were on your original photography. You get those popping right through. It's beautiful. I'm going to do a little bit of this brighter color just to show you, you use it right out of the bottle. And then you can go in there and just soften the edges just by wetting your brush. Paula Kinsavage is here. She's one of our regulars. She said, the photo looks so good with the gels. Hey, Paula. <laughs> Thank you. I wonder, I bet she's used them. Yeah, let us know, Paula. Have you had a chance to grab some watercolor gels yet? That looks great, Kirsten. All right, I just wanted to kind of finish up this corner. And that is by just adding water and pulling this color over. It reminds me of like the Wizard of Oz when everything turns color. Yep, <laughs> it, seriously, it yeah, does feel so like bright. that. There's the yellow brick road, yep. a little bit more teal this time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so anyone that does anything with photos, kids, pets, travel, it's just a great way to add color to a collage, um, to really any project that has a photo. Okay, so pop art, journaling, art journaling, collage art, a really popular trend right now. I want to show you guys just a little bit more of the layering techniques. Ooh, I also want to say, so we have downloadable patterns on Plaid Online, and we have got a lot of really basic patterns. Some are backgrounds, just black and white book pages, lots of different um, printable patterns that you can print out. Look at this butterfly. We love that. We have a lot of black and white. On our library, we've got so many different elements that you could use kind of as a starting point when you're using the new Folk Art watercolor gels. So keep that in mind when you're crafting. So we're going to kind of recreate this. And really, all I want to do is show you the flexibility of what you can do with the gels. I'm going to keep that in there just so you can see it. So I've done the same technique that I showed you with the photo. I tore the papers to create the background. Same technique with Mod Podge. I cut apart our, cuttable, our elements, our downloadable patterns. I found this cute pop art image, printed that on the computer, and just have a really basic piece of collage art. No color, it's kind of fun that way. But what I want to show you guys is, let's see, we're going to pick some different colors. And really, really quick, guys, what Kirsten's talking about, sorry to interrupt. No, I love it. Um, these little butterfly prints she has are from our free Mod Podge downloadable library. So on platonline.com, we have hundreds of designs that you can download and print for free. We've got color designs that you can just Mod Podge onto your projects, which we'll talk about a little bit later this week when we're talking about Mod Podge. Um, but we've also made these black and white designs that are perfect for using with watercolor gel. So that's what Kirsten's referring to. That's all free on platonline.com, so make sure you check those out. Yes. Okay, so you've done your collage art. You could leave it like this. I know I keep saying it, but this is really the unique feature of the gels. With traditional folk art acrylic paint, you would have a harder time coloring, adding color, but keeping the intensity of your image. So the gels are perfect for that. You can just do swatches of color. So just big brush strokes over your background. You can get the intensity of it right out of the bottle. Again, you can always add a little bit of water. And you're getting the image, whether it be paper that you found or our free downloadables or a photo, you get the intensity of what is on the papers. But you get the vibrant color from the gels. So just fun swatches of color. You can go in and pick a specific element, just a few petals on this hydrangea, and just add a pop of color. So that's fun to leave a lot of it black and white. Really the same technique with everything that we're doing today, but I just want to show you how easy it is to do so many different looks. So I'm going to leave some of it black and white. You can pick different colors. Really, there's so much that you can do with it. I'm just going to clean my brush in the water, maybe add a little bit of this bright purple. This is Pacific Iris. That is a gorgeous bright mm. color. 
the colors um, that we have in our watercolor gel lines too, a lot of them are very unique that I haven't seen in any of our other lines. Like that purple, I just think it's so beautiful. Yes, I think so too. And that, um, I think that's periwinkle. What is it? Oh no, waterfall. The colors are beautiful. Yeah. I agree. They are unique. So just adding, layering, you can just see how they work together so well. Water-based, so cleaning up is really easy. I'm going to go in and do just a little bit of this on the wings of the butterfly. These would be really great <clears throat> for art journaling as well. For art journaling, yes, because mm -hmm. it's perfect on paper. Mm -hmm. You could also do, you could do heavy stock watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. And you could also do elements where you just create a collage. I love that. Like I'm doing it totally different than this, but I'm, I mean, the look with the color palette, there's so much that you can do. So this is kind of fun. Very, very simple. Just a simple piece of paper. Just doodle on there. Doodle hearts, doodle polka dots, doodle any pattern. You could do just swatches of color. Let that dry. And then you've kind of created your own paper that you can then cut elements out. So I've cut out, let's scoot that over. I've just cut out some different hearts, some different, um, some different polka dots. And just like someone had commented earlier, doing pen and ink over this is perfect. So I'm just gonna doodle with a black marker. You could doodle with paint pens, you could doodle with metallics, maybe gold and silver. But going over the gels, it's very smooth and you just get a really fun element that then you can use the Mod Podge and attach that to your collage, to your journal. So I love just that. Another fun way to layer, layer, layer. So cute. Your kids could make a little drawing on a piece of paper, let that dry, and then they could go back with a Sharpie and they could join you with some collage art. Okay. So that's one of our favorite techniques with the folk art watercolor gels. I want to show you a few more. I'm going to scoot the collage off of here. So the traditional watercolor artist. This also is wonderful for that. So you can get all of the same looks that you would get with traditional watercolor. So this is just watercolor paper, did a cute floral design. You can see you get where the colors bleed, which is traditional. You get where the colors blend together, which is traditional watercolor. You get the intensity um, of the color right out of the bottle. Then you get a really soft version of that same color by adding water. So really traditional watercolor. The folk art gels are great for that, but without the intimidation for a new watercolor artist. So what you would do if you're doing traditional watercolor, I'm going to get two of my favorite pinks, cotton candy and pink berry. I love a good pink when a paint line includes a really good pink. Mm. And these are both perfect. Okay, so doing watercolor art. I think for the beginner, it's very intimidating because you don't know where your paint's going to go. You just kind of have to trust that you're going to like the application. But with the gels, you want to start with maybe two parts paint and one part water just for your first application because it gives you the control. It's not bleeding out, but it's transparent and you just get the same look but with the control. And then as you build a little confidence, you can add more water. You can even wet the area like a traditional watercolor. So just using water, I'm going to wet that area of the watercolor paper. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Maybe with the sheen. Mm -hmm. There you go. So I'm just going to add water. That's a traditional technique for the watercolor artist. And then they take their watercolor and they apply that to the water and you get that beautiful bleed. That works perfect with mm. the folk art watercolor gels. So a totally different look. You get the control, but then you get the traditional look of using watercolors. That's awesome. I love that you can get both looks. I know, I do too. That's, That's I really think fun. this is one of my favorites and I think that is why, because just 
what you can do with the paint. Mm -hmm. That's layering both the light pink and the dark pink. It doesn't muddy. You still see the different colors in there. You can allow them, just with a little more water on your palette, you can allow those to bleed. So just a really fun application. I'm going to add just a little bit of this peach because I love it so much. Make it look so easy. <laughs> You're sweet, Jess. So going into the green, I think this is that mermaid. Oh, mermaid tail. I've used the colors so much and I don't really just pay as much attention yeah. to the names. <laughs> But the colors are just gorgeous. Mermaid tail slash Kirsten's favorite green. <laughs> right, mermaid tail. <laughs> In honor of Little Mermaid, also my favorite movie. <laughs> but you get the vibrancy and then you get the ability to, to work it like a traditional watercolor paint with that much more control. You could go in after this was dry. Look, you can do a wash. This is just a wet brush with still a little bit of the mermaid tail on there. So the same color, but all those different values. Pretty fun, right? So fun. You could go back in. Let me show you these journals. So same effect. I wet the journal on this one and applied the gel. So I wanted it to bleed and create that traditional watercolor look. Let that dry and went in and did some, some modern um, shapes with a sharpie super fun same with this one I was telling you guys all I did was cover an old journal with watercolor paper again using Mod Podge on the back of the watercolor paper cover your spiral notebook great for back to school and just create areas of wet with just water and flood it with the color go back with the sharpie once it's dry this is kind of cute you could personalize with a name but for this, I just want to show you how soft the colors blend when they come together. So, so much that you can do with just basic watercolor paper. All right, one more thing that I want to show you guys. I know I've gone on and on with the benefits, but the paint is fabulous. So the paint works, it's indoor, outdoor, it's water-based, and it works on any non-porous surface. So it works on wood, um, it works on paper, of course. It works on canvas. And this is kind of fun. It works on matte or bisque, I think that mm -hmm. is what we call this. So not a shiny plate that you would cook on, but a decorative um, ceramic that's got that matte finish. It works great on that because it is porous enough to grab the color. And it works great on, on wood, painted wood or unfinished wood. So this is... a. Um, it's bisque, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Bisque so fire. a bisque mm -hmm. matte um, ceramic is a really fun look because it works just like watercolor paper. You get that bleed. So I'm just going to really quick you sh quickly show you guys the last technique, and that is just using it on raw wood. It can be natural wood like the wood round mm -hmm. coasters, or it can be um, a wood plaque, a wood vase, anything that you like the wood grain and you just want to accent with a really pretty color. Maybe I'll use, Jess, do you have a favorite color? Ooh, that's tough. All right. I like that deep purple one. Whenever I ask Jess that when we're working on a project, she says all. Yeah. <laughs> I like that periwinkle too, actually. That's my other favorite. How about that one? Um, you usually surface... say, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go. I was going to say, you usually say all. But yeah, yeah that's periwinkle. <laughs> that is beautiful. I know. It is really hard to pick with these. <clears throat> okay. Um. So same technique, you guys, that we have been using. If I want to start on the bottom and get a really intense periwinkle, I'm just going to base coat it like I would with any traditional acrylic paint. But as it dries, you'll see that that wood grain, even using it right out of the bottle, that wood grain is still going to come through there. And then I'm simply going to wet my brush. It stays open long enough to do all of these fun techniques without creating a hard line. All I'm doing is softening that edge and just going into the water. You can do this with one color, two colors, but I'm going to do just kind of an ombre look. So really quick, Kirsten, I just want to say this surface that Kirsten is painting on, you can also purchase on platonline.com. So if you're checking out our sale, this is under our wood surfaces. Um, so make sure to check that out. It's really versatile. You can see the watercolor gels work beautifully on it, but we have a few wood vases um, that you can check out. And then also Kayla just needed some clarification. 
So the watercolor gels work best on porous surfaces. So anything that's slick and shiny won't grab the color like Kirsten mentioned. They talked about maybe glass. It wouldn't work best on glass. So something like wood or canvas or that bisque fired um, ceramic would be really great for this. Just something that can grab that moisture. Absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to show the bisque because there's so much bisque out there now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but exactly what Jess said, a slick surface it would not be perfect for. I hope you guys can see this because it's, it's working perfectly. So on our plaid wood surface base, can you guys see how the wood grain, and it'll get more intense as it dries. Darker color, it ombres as you go to the top, but the wood grain coming through is what I love the most about it. Mm, that's beautiful. The wood grain coming through is such a popular trend right now. Okay, so those are all of, all of our favorite techniques. Of course, it works with our folk art mat. You could do a, um, a heavy banded color. Like I wanna show you guys this rainbow. This is a perfect example of folk art matte acrylics combined with the gels. You get the watercolor, you get a solid color. You get a watercolor, you get a solid color. So all of our folk art specialty paints work fabulously together, but the watercolor gels are great for so many fun techniques. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Jess, if there's not any specific questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do want to point out one thing that we forgot to mention, um, that rotational organizer next to you. So this is also a plaid item, guys. So if you're checking out our sale on plaidonline.com, make sure to check out that rotational organizer. It'd be great for holding all of your new um, folk art formulas that you're going to purchase, watercolor gels, flat, sugar metallic, all of our two ounce bottles fit in that, so it's perfect for your desk. You can see Kirsten spinning it. I feel like I'm on a game show. Yeah. <laughs> the price is right. Um, so make sure to check that out too because it's really fun and it's really versatile to use for your workspace. Um, so Kirsten, thank you so much. That was so fun. I love getting to see the demonstration of the watercolor gels. It's so satisfying to watch and you make it look super duper easy. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Um, I wanna remind you guys about our sale that we're having this week on all of our brand new products for 2023. Um, if you go to plaidonline.com slash new and purchase $70 or more worth of product, you get 30% off, which is a great deal. You can snag all of these products we're talking about this week. Um, yesterday, we talked about our sugar metallics and our folk art mat and also our folk art terrazzo chips. And then today we've talked about our watercolor gels. So we're here all week long for our new product showcase every day at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. This afternoon, we'll be back with Chris and Andy and myself again talking about our Let's Paint programs and some of the great programs we've launched in our Let's Paint series this year, so make sure to check that out, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see you then. Bye, guys. Bye.